So, rendering. So I'm going quickly to subdivide the eyes right here. Just to have like nice and clean surface. So generally what I do, I, I, I will create a, a few base render passes that I'm going to use uh, later to composite my materials in the brush, in uh, Photoshop, sorry. Um, I'll just try to make sure that I haven't forgot some key elements. Maybe I could fix quickly the lips here of the toad. Yeah, just this part here because it looks super weird. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select and use this here. And uh, while backing up before, I'm going to do a quick panel loop with not going to happen. Neither I want a dual sided panel loop. Uh, we just try to create a, a bit, a little piece of geometry in, on the inside. In the other direction, let's see what it does. Longer. Okay. I'm going to tell it lower. Ah, yeah. Okay, so let's bake all my layers. Now, delete my lower geometry, select only this, and try this panel loop feature. No. I don't want any polishing and I want something way thicker. A bit more thicker. Panel loop. Not that much. Okay. Now I want to select only this. group for this one so I can only get selected uh, I want to remove this part here okay so I have to make sure that I'm not creating any sim And this is why, why do I have a seam? Okay, let's see. So I'm going to do something simple. I'm going to tell hidden, duplicate. And okay, this one has the history. And this one I'm going to select only this geometry and I'm going to delete everything else. Okay, so now I have a bit of geometry in here. Thank you. 
just trying to create an organic feel on the in inner part of this uh, doesn't have to be perfect because it's mostly going to be invisible Okay, looks better. <clears throat> so. I'm going to do my base render passes. First of all, so just want to have one, one simple materials. My very base pass will be with this water because it changed it changed the values too much with the, uh, with the bright water. So let's do this. So I'm going to render this at 8k. And for this base pass, I also want to create some basic uh, render passes. So I want my depth pass my geometric normal pass and I, i'll show you what it is but basically it's a it's a map that give an indication on the orientation of the geometry in space so it, it's useful to select for for example just the bottom planes or the, the the camera facing planes and so on and the clone pass which is an id pass but for the clone pass to work i have all of my sub tools here so i want to select everything and to unlink materials just for this pass so now because i have like a new material for each sub tool it's going to create a nice id pass for me and this id pass is going to be i show you if you if you are used to 3d you know what an id pass is but basically it's a flat color for each different material i have so for each different sub tools i'm going to have a nice flat color that i'll be using to select to quickly select part of my image so i'm going to render this at 128 samples and i have this uh, q feature in photoshop and I, i'm also going to render this one that I queued earlier. These are just work in progresses of the of the image. So I'm going to queue this with Control U. So now I have this job which is queued. So I, I can undo my unlink materials to get back to only one simple material again. And now i'm going to render some indication about uh, the 
reflectivity of the material so I'm going to use a metal change the lighting to basic because with the metal material I don't need to have a full simulation so right now most of the time when this happens this is synonymous of key shot crashing let's see no fine so i want to tweak things just a little bit because if i i don't had it a bit of roughness, usually the result is very, very noisy. So I'm cleaning, I, I'm trying to clean a bit of the information by removing some of the ray bouncing because with three bounds the reflective material starts to reflect itself so I, I want to simplify this um, I shadow quality global illumination Let's have a uh, full black. So I'm going to do maybe two of these passes. First of all, I want to remove this carrier burn water in here because it's going to consume too much resources. I don't need this right now. Okay, so I'm doing to Q one like that. Option eight, eight uh, K. I'm going to remove my render passes. I already have them. I don't need more of them right now. So Control U to Q this, and now I'm going to do another one, maybe at at a higher sampling level. Dealing with bugs and crashes, it's really a complete part of the job, which is frustrating, definitely. Because some, some, sometimes it brings too much uh, noise, so I'm not sure if it's going to be helpful or, or not. It really depends on the direction of the sun and the scene. So I'm going to cue this one. And uh, what else? Now I want a couple maps I have a depth map now what I want is a height map because a height map is going to be quite useful to um, to be able to select and create interesting texture gradients on the grass so let's let's add um, color gradient gradient in here and to move into performance mode 
free camera. And I want to change the orientation of my gradient. No. So let's move it with a mapping tool. doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, and I I don't need to be exact because I'm going to render this at 32 bits to make sure I have the enough uh, data at each um, level of, uh, of depth. For example, here there is a, a less pronounced gradient. I, I don't think I will need it on the fish, but anyway, let's render this now. So I have to get back to basic mode because it won't work. I need only, I think, eight samples. It's totally fine. Let's add 16 just for the anti-aliasing and I want to pick a TIFF 32 bits so this way I'll, I'll get 32 bits level of information to make sure I can, I can get a, a nice gradient without any bending at different level of depth so control U to add that to the Q moving back to GPG And now I'm going to plan some textures, quick texture mappings. So I have a couple textures that I really like. I, I, I rendered in a various fractal softwares. And, uh, I use them quite often because I, I really like the, uh, the color palette. I don't know the... Just the texture because they are, they are not really realistic. So I like the fact that it brings a more illustrative, more stylized touch. So I'm using this box mapping, which which allows me to quickly have a texture that is project projected in an interesting way. And I'm, I, what I'm doing is that I'm creating texture passes uh, for which I have no idea if I'm going to use them or not. I can't tell for sure. But I, I like to have them and uh, just uh, here also when I'm starting to do the compositing in Photoshop it creates options to experiment with various uh, color schemes and, and have this potential for happy accidents. So uh, this is something I really like when I'm painting or all the thing I do is trying to not to be completely in control about what I'm doing. So I can, I can use my artistic eye to be uh, surprised and, and spot interesting events and decide on the go if, uh, if, if this represents a potential for, for the image or not. Hmm. 
for some, re some reason, uh, Keyshot is uh, messing with me. I also I want to bring some of these great greens here on the grass. So I'm just trying to uh, get the proper position. Be interesting on the on the left side. So control U for this one. Uh, another one which can be interesting. Yeah, this one could be cool. projection for this one because I feel it, it could be interesting to bring some uh, coloring accidents. Some of the time I'm I'm not even using this, but uh, it it helped me to to figure out different feel, different color feel in Photoshop, and uh, sometimes just help me to to get an idea about uh, the colors I want to experiment with. Sometimes the, the idea I have about the way I'm approaching things, it's more like I'm trying to art direct happy accidents rather than trying to be totally, completely in control. And I'm looking for yeah, unexpected things and uh, trying to uh, to make free association be between a texture and a feeling, and a, and I mean, right now it's it's black, yellow, red, but I can do pretty much anything I want with this texture. Later in Photoshop, I can change the colors, can change the grayscale, invert the uh, the uh, the values if I want, completely alter them. So yeah, it's just <clears throat> having. Ready to be to be used and create creates potential for, for accidents. For you, let's try another one. This one is interesting too. Same here, I, I'm looking at the color, but also at the value patterns, at the structure of the pattern. Ah, oh, shit. Totally destroyed my, my Canva ratio, so I want to get back to this one. Back to flat 
and it has the same setting AK option for samples and lighting basic okay so color and two box map and sometimes this is interesting what happens when, when you stay in matcap uh, mode and project the texture, sometimes it, it, it does really, really amazing things. So I'm going to uh, use this at my advantage, but it also crashes quite often, so I want to be careful with this or, or not. It's not a big problem if it crashes. Yeah, it could be interesting this, this directionality underneath the Vuitton. Could be something interesting. So I'm going to do another one. Let's get into um, box map mode. There is a feel like like, but not that much. Let's try spherical, cylindrical, this spherical. This could be interesting here and here. Let me choose. Render this one. Yeah, I'm interested right now in this directionality of the texture for this part of the image. And now I'm looking here. I think I, re I really like this texture right now. The uh, different shapes it brings. I want to try to get that, that feeling maybe at some other places. I, I really like the, uh, the patterning here. Okay, let's try a completely different one. I might 
again and like not using at all, using any of these textures at all. But uh, it's really it's really interesting for me to, to try to figure what kind of a uh, of texture language I want to bring because it, it helped me to get away from the reference. Otherwise, I, I tend to uh, to stick too much to the reference. Uh, And once I'm going to be painting, I, I'll probably go back and forth between Keyshot and Photoshop to on and even ZBrush to on the go do a couple modifications, sculpt the things just because I think it could be interesting in the scene and uh, it's going to be interactive. Just looking I have maybe another interesting one. move the scene downward to have uh, this interesting texture on the grass blade. I think this one is interesting for the grass. Okay. This is probably not bad for a beginning. Let's see if I can find a couple different textures. I don't know. I'm looking at my ref folder right now. I'm trying to Just see if I can get surprised by something. What are those movies? No, I don't think I'm, I'm finding something interesting. Well, it's not bad for a beginning, so I'm going to launch all these renders. Let's see what I have. Okay, I have uh, this queue. So these ones are going to take a little while to render. But after the texture projection in box mapping, it's extremely fast, even at 8K, it's just less one less than one minute per, per texture, so it's quite fast. And uh, yeah, if I, when I'm going to composite this in Photoshop, I, I, I'll do some specific renders for some part of the image. 